Hello everybody, my name is Brandon. Welcome back to Cinefessions, where we talk all things media. So I am back today with another entry in my thrift store haul series, and I believe this is number six in that series. And so today we are talking some movies that I've found recently, including one video game. So I have like 29 movies here in one video game, so 30 things to talk about in this video. Um, I will mention right from the start, if you are not interested in DVDs, then you probably won't be too terribly interested in this video because I have uh, one game, two VHS tapes, and then the rest are all DVDs. So unfortunately, I just don't come across Blu-rays very often while I'm uh, out thrifting in my area. For whatever reason, they just I don't see them often. And when I do, they're typically ones I already own. So uh, just it is what it is. Now, mind you, I've paid 50 cents or less for everything I'm going to show you guys here today. So I'm not complaining about a 50 cent DVD. And now I have access to it. So, you know, I can upgrade in the future if I decide that I love the movie. You know, I can definitely grab the Blu-ray down the line. But for the most part, this would probably be the best that I do with these. So, yeah, really excited to share with you guys everything that I found recently. Um, and I should mention the Thrift Store Hall series are continuing because I have another stack of books over there for uh, number eight or what would it be? Number seven, I guess. And then a whole nother stack of movies uh, for number eight in the series. So I, it's not going to stop. I am continuously thrifting. So I'm always finding uh, cool media to share with you guys. So yeah, I am excited for this one though. So let's not waste any more time at all. I will mention though, if you guys are enjoying my thrift store hauls or my other content, make sure you give it a like down below. That really does help me out. But with that said, let's dive right in to my thrift store haul number six. As I mentioned, I'll start with the one video game I grabbed, and most of you aren't going to care about this, but this is NBA Live 10 on the PlayStation 3. So this is actually in really good shape. It is complete with the manual and everything, which is awesome. So yeah, this was a really cool find. And the reason it's a cool find, I know it's just an old sports game, but if you guys have been following the channel for a while, you might recall that I collect old sports games. So I have a ridiculous amount of old sports video games. I, it's it's stupid, but it's like the biggest part of my video game collection, I would argue. Um, but anyway, this is cool because this was actually the last NBA Live proper um, on the consoles or anything. And so uh, finding this is a, a little bit more difficult than finding something like NBA 05 or, or whatever the case may be. Um, so this was a pretty cool find. I did own this already on Xbox 360, but it was like an old used GameStop version with a fake case and everything. So I was very happy to find this one for, again, 50 cents. Like that's ridiculous. So yeah, this one is actually worth a little bit because it was the last in the NBA Live series. Now it did go on, if you are a sports game fan, you know, it did go on to become NBA Elite, but that didn't last very long. And then, uh, you know, things went from there. So this was kind of the last one for a while, I guess I'll say. Um, but yeah, so this is actually a really good one. One. NBA Live 10 on the PlayStation 3, the only video game I've been able to find that was worth picking up, but something I'm happy to have in the collection. Moving over to a couple VHS tapes that I found, and uh, so this kind of ages the video or dates the video a little bit because I found these right around the same time I found my VCR. So I got the VCR and I was like, hey, now I need some VHS tapes. And so I was out shopping and came across Scream 2 on VHS. So of course I had to pick it up. I mean, this is just so nostalgic for me. Uh, I saw this one in theaters, like opening weekend, and uh, then how I watched it subsequently from there was on VHS. So yeah, very happy to have this one in the collection collection now and it's in pretty good shape given its age and everything um and this one i think was like 10 cents or something because it was uh, normally about a quarter and that's like half off when I found it. So it was a really good deal for this. So had to pick up Scream 2. And then the other VHS tape I found is another one that's nostalgic to me, Death to Smoochie. So the very first time I saw Death to Smoochie, which is a like dark comedy uh, starring Robin Williams, a black comedy. Uh, the first time I saw this was I was sick from, I was sick home from school one day, went to Blockbuster. I saw this in there. It looked intriguing. For some reason, I picked it up and and honestly, I didn't really like it, but I've watched it, uh, you know, since then. And I really love this movie. I just was too young the first time I watched it, but uh, watching it on uh, a second time and maybe even a third time at this point, I've really uh, grown to love this movie. So I think Death to Smoochie is super underrated. I don't hear a lot of people talking about it, but more people should see this movie. So I figured, hey, this is the first time I've seen or the first way I watched this. So I might as well grab it on VHS as well. Another one that was like 10 cents or something. So super cheap to add the, to the collection. 
and it's just a cool, uh, like I said, nostalgic cover for me, you know, remembering this from when I rented it at Blockbuster way back when. So yeah, I thought this was fun. Uh, it has a little sticker up there. Oh, just a green sticker. Doesn't mean anything. So Scream 2 and Death to Smoochie, two VHS tapes that I found recently and uh, two I'm really happy or excited, I guess, to revisit because they're both great in their own way. All right, so now let's talk about the DVDs I grabbed. And honestly, these are in no order whatsoever. So just randomly at the top here, first on the docket is Hollywood Homicide. So this is kind of a good example of movies I don't mind buying on Blu-ray. They're movies that I would like to see for 50 cents, and I don't necessarily want to spend the money for it on Blu-ray, so I don't mind picking it up on DVD at all. Um, and I will mention, the the 4K player I have does a remarkable job of upscaling DVD, so watching it on my 4K TV actually looks pretty darn good. Like, I know I did a review for um, what was it? Not Unfriended, but the kind of uh, friend request. I did a review for friend request, and that was on DVD, and it looked really good. So, uh, you know, the fact that it's on DVD is totally fine with me, but anyway justifications aside, Hollywood Homicide. So this is a Harrison Ford and a Josh Hartnett vehicle. This, I believe, was during the time when Josh Hartnett was kind of the big deal. Um, I want to say this was around the time when Halloween H2O came out, um, but I don't, I can't find a year here real quick, uh, but I think it was around that same time. So he's obviously a, a big name at this point, um, but yeah, just an action movie with them too. So I'm sure it's going to be pretty fun. And you can see it does have the full screen, but most importantly, it does have the uh, anamorphic widescreen there. So yeah, that's the only way I'll get a DVD is if it has its original aspect ratio. I will point that out. But anyway, so Hollywood Homicide is the first DVD I want to talk about. Here's a movie that I've always heard really good things about and I've always wanted to watch it. I just, I never did for whatever reason. So now it's in the collection. This is Spanglish with Adam Sandler. And this is supposed to be one of those more serious Adam Sandler movies. Now, Mind you, it's a comedy, but it's supposed to have more of a like genuine tone to it as opposed to something like Billy Madison or Happy Gilmore or whatever the case may be. Um, so I honestly like the <laughs> Adam Sandler movies are very hit or miss with me. I like it when he's doing uh, some more of the serious things. Like I really like things like Fifty First Dates. I feel like that's just more, I don't know, it's more sincere and I really like that. I hate Billy Madison. I find it just so annoying. Happy Gilmore, I think, I, is one of the exceptions. I love that kind of goofy comedy, but I don't know. I'm hit and miss with him. So anyway, this one I'm really looking forward to. So yeah, excited to check this out. Spanglish with Adam Sandler. This one is super silly and one that I probably wouldn't buy if I didn't find it for 50 cents, but it is The Crocodile Hunter Collision Course with Steve Irwin. So, of course, everybody knows Steve Irwin, who tragically died doing what he loved, um, but this is his first big screen movie. So, I wanted to check it out. It's not one I've ever seen. I always used to watch clips of him when I was younger, and I always enjoyed him. Uh, he's just kind of the best at what he did, and so I wanted to check this one out. So, I figured I would pick it up for the 50 cents it cost. So, yeah. And the coolest part, look at this, Siskel, or no, what is it? Uh, Ebert and Roper at the movies give it two thumbs up. So, I mean, <laughs> you gotta love that. Uh, Ebert and Roper are giving Crocodile Hunter a collision course two thumbs up. That's that's awesome. So, yeah, pretty cool to find this one. The or, uh, Rather, the Crocodile Hunter collision course. This is a super goofy romantic comedy of sorts that I really got more for my wife because she likes these types of movies. Uh, but this is Just Friends. It has a really great cast. Amy Smart, Ryan Reynolds, Anna Ferris, Chris Klein. So, I mean, it has an excellent cast to it. So, I'm guessing it's going to be pretty good. Um, I've seen parts of this one before, but I've never watched it from beginning to end. So, now I can do that. But yeah, I don't know. Looks interesting enough. It's a, a goofy romantic comedy with a great cast. So, that, that's good enough for me. So, Just Friends. Another one for my wife. She loves this movie. This is a Hilary Duff film, which I think every girl of a certain age loves Hilary Duff. Um, but this is Raise Your Voice. So kind of one of her classics from back when. Uh, this is uh, Hilary Duff's character is trying to become a, uh, a celebrity, a singer. And so she's basically just following her dreams and kind of the uh, trials and tribulations that she comes across during the way. So this is another one that I'm sure I've seen in the past because my sister was obsessed with Hilary Duff, but I don't remember it if I did. So so, I don't know. Fr frankly, it's probably one I won't watch, but I know my wife will. So, <laughs> there's that at least. So, yeah. Raise your voice. Hillary Duff. Like I said, I think people of a certain age, you, you just love Hillary Duff. 
This is kind of a romantic comedy heavy, at least, at least section of this video, because this one is a Hugh Grant film with Drew Barrymore. So, you know, it's a romantic comedy, but this is music and lyrics. Um, and this is one that I'd heard about over the years. Again, just as kind of a cute rom-com, but I've never seen it before. So I figured I would pick it up uh, for the price and uh, it looks interesting. It looks cute. So mm, who knows? <laughs> maybe I'll enjoy it. Maybe I won't. I'm very hit or miss when it comes to rom-coms, but uh, yeah, I think the funnier they are, the more I like them and the more romantic they are, the less I tend to like them, but I don't know. I'm weird like that, I guess. So a Hugh Grant and Drew Barrymore romantic comedy, music and lyrics. This was a really cool find because I remember watching this way back when I was in high school. I, I turned it on. I didn't like it at all. I shut it off and I never went back to it. But I feel like it's one that if I give another shot, I might enjoy it because it gets so much praise. This is Monty Python and the Holy Grail. So I know I've already upset a lot of people saying I didn't like it the first time I watched it, but I am definitely willing to give this another, another shot because I've heard so many great things over the years. Uh, and it's just one like I want to like it. Like I want to enjoy this movie. So I'm going to try it again. Like I said, previously I watched it while I was in high school. I may have just been too young. I didn't get what was going on. Um, I feel like I've watched a lot, uh, a lot more British humor since then. So hopefully when I go back to this, I'll enjoy it. But I thought this was a cool find the special edition DVD of Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Nostalgia runs thick when I'm running through the uh, through the thrift store and trying to find movies because this is another one, The Glass House, that I distinctly remember always wanting to check out from Blockbuster, but for whatever reason, I never did and I never saw it. So uh, this stars Lily Sobieski. I probably butchered her name, but our main character here who I've always enjoyed. Um, and then Diane Lane and Stellan Skarsgård are in this as well. But this is a thriller and it just always looked so creepy to me. I remember renting movies. It had this trailer on it. It looked so good. I have no idea why I never actually ended up renting it from Blockbuster, but I didn't. And now it's in my collection. So I'm excited to check this one out. Let me know. Have you guys seen this thriller? Is it worth it? Is it decent? I really hope so. So The Glass House, another nostalgic one for me. This is a great movie and one that, frankly, I probably should have just waited on and grabbed on Blu-ray, but it is what it is. This is not another teen movie. So this, of course, is a satire of all those rom-coms from like the early to mid 2000s, um, and it does it really well. It is hilarious. So I've always enjoyed this one. Uh, it's just it's just fun. It is so reminiscent of high school for me that I, I love it. So very excited to add this one to the collection. And like I said, this is likely one that I would probably upgrade to Blu-ray if I find it cheap enough. But in the meantime, I have the uh, unrated extended director's cut on DVD. The sequel for this next one is actually just about to come out. And I'll be honest with you, like the trailer for this, for whatever reason, is really catching my eye. The, I think the music first and foremost is just beautiful. The art style is gorgeous. The story looks really like sincere and heartwarming. I'm just, I'm very interested in checking it out. And it's really not a movie that's made for me at all, but uh, that's okay. It's the sequel to Spirit. So I have now the original because I really want to see the sequel. So I figured, hey, you need to check out the original first. I was able to find it at the thrift store. So this is Spirit uh, Stallion of the Cimarron. I'm going to go with there. That might be wrong, but uh, that's what it looks like to me. So yeah, I don't know. I just want to see if this one is any good or not because I really want to check out the sequel, but I feel... I'm just kind of OCD that way. I need to see the original before I check out a sequel. It's just the way my mind works. So yeah, excited to have this one and really am curious if this one is going to be as good as the trailer for the second one looks. So yeah, very cool find. Spirit, the Stallion of the Cimarron. I'm really surprised that I haven't seen this one yet, given my background in theater, but I have not seen Shakespeare in Love, and I was able to find it on DVD, so I picked it up. Uh, this one, you can see here, a seven Academy, winner of seven Academy Awards. That's ridiculous. So uh, this was from 1997, and clearly it was extremely popular. So uh, this is one that everyone has always talked about over the course of the years. I just never sat down and watched it, so I need to correct that. Uh, this, of course, is just basically a love story uh, with William Shakespeare in the main role. So I don't know. Intrigued to check it out. Has an amazing cast. Judy Dench, Gwyneth Paltrow, Joseph Fiennes, Jeffrey Rush, uh, Colin Firth, Ben Affleck. Like, that's amazing. <laughs> I can see why it won seven Academy Awards just from that. So yeah, very excited to own this one now so I can check it out. So very cool. The 1997 seven Academy Award winning film Shakespeare in Love. Here is another one that has had just so much hype over the years and I just have never seen it. So uh, now it's in my collection. But uh, and frankly, I don't even know if I'm going to like it. But it has Tom Cruise, who I like, so hopefully it'll be good. Um, but this is The Last Samurai. And I'm just realizing now, reading the back of the box, that this is a Ken 
Watanabe role. I'm, I'm butchering his last name, but you know who he is. Uh, he is an excellent actor, and I didn't even realize he was in this. So now I'm a little bit more intrigued to check this out because I feel like this is w- probably one of his more early roles. So I'm really intrigued to see how he does here. But yeah, so this, uh, you know, Tom Cruise is playing um, a Civil War hero captain, um, and he goes to Japan and eventually becomes a samurai. So it sounds interesting. Um, hopefully I'll enjoy it. It is pretty long, 154 minutes. So uh, I have to have some time set aside when I sit down to watch this one. But yeah, let me know. Is it worth the time? Let me know down below. But yeah, excited for this. So The Last Samurai with Tom Cruise. This is definitely one. I should have waited for the Blu-ray, but you're there at the thrift store. It's staring you in the face for 50 cents. You figure why not? This is Rise of the Guardians from DreamWorks. So this is another animated film from one of the better, you know, animation companies out there in DreamWorks. I love so much of the work that they do. And this is one that I actually haven't seen yet. Um, I do remember putting this on when I worked at uh, Family Video. I used to play it in the background. So I, you know, I've heard some of the music and everything and, you know, seen little bits and pieces, but never actually sat down to watch it from start to finish. So yeah, it sounds pretty entertaining, a more fantastical uh, animated film. So I'm sure it's going to be pretty enjoyable, especially because it's from DreamWorks. So Rise of the Guardians from DreamWorks. Another great example of a movie I'm probably never going to need to own on Blu-ray. This is Balls of Fury. So I, I've i always been a fan of like ping pong. My dad used to play ping pong all the time when he was younger. So I don't know. I guess it's just kind of uh, made its way over to me. I just enjoy playing it. Um, but this is a ping pong movie taken to the extreme. Uh, and so I'm sure it's going to be just kind of stupid and funny, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So that's good enough for me. So yeah, we'll see if this one's any good or not. Balls of fury. So many of these are in like old blockbuster cases and they still have the sticker on the back and everything. It's pretty crazy. But uh, this is I Spy with Eddie Murphy and Owen Wilson. So this is another uh, action movie. It says espionage with attitude. Uh, just has an awesome cast. Eddie Murphy's, uh, you know, great. And then uh, Owen Wilson is hilarious too. So yeah, this one should be a lot of fun. Again, just another action vehicle for them. I think they're going to play kind of like a buddy cop type thing, but in the uh, world of espionage versus like a, a cop or whatever the cases. So yeah, should be pretty fun. I spy with Owen Wilson and Eddie Murphy. This is a really cool one because I didn't realize it was a documentary when I picked it up, but uh, looking at it, I believe it actually is. This is Tupac Resurrection. Um, so this, as it says here in his own words, and right on the back, it says, this is my story, a story about ambition, violence, redemption, and love. So that's pretty much all we need to know about this. It should be really cool. I know virtually nothing about Tupac other than he has some incredible music. So yeah, I think this will be pretty fun. And I was actually shocked how many documentaries uh, and like biopics there are about Tupac. So hopefully this is one of the good ones out of the, the so many that there are. So Tupac Resurrection. This is one that I swear I, I owned in the past and I probably just ended up selling it when I got rid of most of my DVDs. But uh, this is Out of Time with Denzel Washington. Uh, Dean Kane is in this as well, which is cool. Um, and then there was one more person, Ava Mendez, I wanted to point out. Yeah, so she's excellent too. So uh, this is exactly what you think it is. It's just a like thriller, cop thriller uh, of, you know, from the mid 2000s. I don't know exactly when this one was released. 2003, so I guess early 2000s. Um, but yeah, kind of, you know, that sexy, stylish action thriller that you're expecting is what this is going to be. So yeah, sounds pretty fun. And I, I love this cast of characters. So hopefully this will be enjoyable. Out of Time with Denzel. Next up is a movie that I really loved. I thought this was done so well. Uh, this is called Thank You for Smoking. Um, and this stars Aaron Eckhart, uh, but it has William H. Macy in it. Adam Brody is in this. Robert Duvall. Like, it has a remarkable cast in here. Um, Katie Holmes is in here too, which is cool. Uh, but basically, with this one, uh, Aaron Eckhart is playing like uh, the like the spokesperson, the spinster, basically, for uh, the big tobacco companies. And so his career in his goal in his job is to simply keep people smoking. Uh, and it, like it says in the back, even if it kills him. And so all, all the while trying to remain a role model for his 12 year old son. So it's just a really well done movie that I cannot wait to revisit. So very excited to find this one for so cheap. So thank you for smoking with a remarkable cast. Here is one that is completely outside of my wheelhouse, but I had to grab it because it looks really cool. Uh, this is called Paid in Full. It has Mackay Pfeiffer, um, who else? Wood Harris and Cameron, who 
I actually only just learned about recently. Somebody posted something on Twitter talking about how one of his albums was like their favorite of all time. And so I was listening to that. It is a wonderful uh, rap album. It's great. And so uh, I saw that, saw his name on it. Mackay Pfeiffer's in it. I had to grab it. Um, Mackay Pfeiffer, I know probably best from Dawn of the Dead 2004. I love him in that. Um, but yeah, so this is The American Dream Bling Bling is what it says on the back. So looks like another crime thriller, but it looks like uh, like a really fun one. So hopefully this one will be as good as it's looking. Paid in Full with Mackay Pfeiffer and Cameron. Another movie I absolutely love, and I was actually shocked to realize I didn't own this on Blu-ray, so this is definitely one I will be upgrading on Blu-ray at some point, uh, but this is Juno, which of course uh, stars uh, Elliot Page, Michael Sarah, jo- uh, Jason Bateman, Jennifer Garner, another just amazing cast, um, and this is about a, a high school girl here, Elliot Page, who gets accidentally gets pregnant uh, with Michael Sarah's character's baby. Um, and so then she's going to, they decide they're going to give it up for adoption and then kind of things go from there. But it, it is a coming of age story done in just a beautiful way. I love this movie so much. I have the, uh, the soundtrack to this on vinyl, the score. It's wonderful. It is so great. So yeah, this is just a favorite of mine. So I was really surprised I didn't already own this, but and now I have it on DVD. So it's just a matter of upgrading down the uh, in the future, down the line, whatever you want to say. So yeah, Juno, uh, just a great film that everyone should check out. This is a movie that I'd never even heard of before, but it's from the uh, special effects team that did Independence Day. So that caught my attention. Uh, this is called Coronado, and you can see the cover there. It looks just crazy, uh, but apparently, like, this uh, woman is searching for her missing fiancé, and it takes her from Beverly Hills to Switzerland to the titular Coronado, uh, who's actually that city or town or whatever it is, is on the brink of a, like, civil war thanks to this dictator that's uh, this evil dictator. So... Sounds bonkers, so I am here for it. So I'm really excited to check this one out. Have you guys heard of this one? Is it any good or not? Is it worth the the runtime, which is very short, actually, only an hour and 24 minutes, but is it worth my time? Let me know down below. So Coronado from the special effects team that brought you Independence Day. Before Romeo and Juliet... There was Tristan and Isolde. So this one sounds decent enough. This, it sounds like a romantic film, but done amongst like all these big epic battles and things. So I figured, why not? You know, J- uh, James Franco's great. Sophia Miles is excellent. Why not give it a shot? So yeah, I've actually never uh, even really heard about this one. I, I knew when it came out, I, you know, I saw trailers for it or whatever, but I don't really hear anybody ever talk about that. And there's probably a reason for that, but I figured might as well give it a shot. So we'll see. Tristan and Isolde. So here is a movie that I have zero interest in. And if I'm wrong, which I could be, let me know down below and maybe I'll check it out. But this is Beaches with uh, Bette Midler and Barbara Hershey, who were like became friends at 11 years old. And then they grow up and I don't know, fun things happen to them. Bad things probably happen to them. I I don't really know. Uh, Not one that I I really care to watch. But like I said, if I'm wrong, let me know. This I grabbed 100% for my wife. She actually uh, has the VHS tape of it, but we I think we messed up the VHS tape with my old VCR trying to test that out. And so I she doesn't have it. And so I owed her a, a DVD or at least version of this. So this is how I, I ended up grabbing this one. So Beaches with Bette Midler. Again, should I watch this? Is it better than I'm thinking it is? I doubt it, but let me know. Next up is an action movie filled with drama that has a great cast. And so I, that's the reason I grabbed this one was for the cast. But Kevin Costner and Ashton Kutcher in The Guardian. So this is a time when Ashton Kutcher is, you know, very, very famous at this point. Um, this is either toward the end of that 70s show or right afterwards, whatever the case is. But uh, I heard really good things about it. Basically, you know, uh, Costner is playing kind of the grizzled veteran. Kutcher is the cocky rookie and he's going to try to train train him and then they end up, you know, coming across a disaster. Uh, they are Coast Guards. And so it's going to be a kind of rescue mission type film. So I tend to like that. You can see from the cover there. But yeah, sounds like something I'd enjoy. Going to be pretty basic, I'm guessing, given the, the the plot synopsis. But hopefully it'll be something good either way. So Kevin Costner and uh, Ashton Kutcher in The Guardian.
This is a movie I've been meaning to see forever and have just never done it. Uh, Jack Black, Ben Stiller, Robert Downey Jr., Jr. We have Tropic Thunder. So this is just a comedy. I believe what happens here is that our main characters are supposed to be filming a movie, but then they end up in like a real battleground situation and they don't realize it until it's too late. Uh, and I think if I remember right from the trailers, that's kind of what this movie is about. But I love this cast and I know that might be controversial because not everyone likes these actors, but I think they're hilarious. Jack Black is one of my favorites. Ben Stiller, How Do You Go Wrong? And then Robert Downey Jr., Iron Man. Like, come on. This is going to be awesome. I cannot wait to check this movie out. Tropic Thunder with an awesome cast. Oh, man. I love this next movie. This is just one that doesn't get old. Remember Tom Green, you guys? Like, I loved him growing up. He was so, so much my era. I loved watching him. But he did a couple movies, and all of them, frankly, are really good. One of my favorites, though, is Freddy Got Fingered. I don't know if I like this one or Road Trip better. Honestly, I probably like Road Trip better. But still, this is a great movie. Tom Green is just stupid and so funny. So I had to grab this one. I never owned it for whatever reason. But this is just going to be your typical, like, uh, what, early 2000s? Yeah, early 2000s uh, goofy comedy. Comedy. It has Tom Green on the cover. You know what you're getting. At least if you know Tom Green, you know what you're getting. So yeah, very excited to check this one out again because it's been way too many years. And last but not least, one of, in my opinion, the most underrated romantic comedies I have ever seen. <laughs> which is ridiculous to say, but this is Fever Pitch with Drew Barrymore and Jimmy Fallon, who I love. I think they are hilarious. This movie is just so perfect for me. It's a rom-com, but it has this baseball theme to it, and it's just so good. Basically, uh, Jimmy Fallon is obsessed with the Boston Red Sox, uh, trying to see them win the World Series, and it is affecting this new relationship that he has with Drew Barrymore's character, and it kind of grows from there, I'll say, but I love this. Jimmy Fallon is honestly, like, I think he's so funny, and this is one of the most underrated rom-coms I've ever seen. One of the most underrated comedies I've ever seen is Jimmy Fallon and Queen Latifah in Taxi. I love that movie. Now, mind you, it's been a number of years since I've seen both of these, but I mean, I, I can't imagine they're any worse than when I saw them a few years back. So I need to watch both of them again. I, I know that's a hot take because Jimmy Fallon is very uh, divisive, I'll say, but I love this movie and Jimmy Fallon is fantastic. So check this out. Give it a shot if you are into rom-coms at all or you like baseball, whatever the case is. If you like Jimmy Fallon, check this movie out because I think it's great. So that's going to wrap it up, guys. Fever Pitch is the last movie that I'm going to show in this haul. All right. So there they all are. If I can get to the bottom there. Awesome. So like I said, I have another stack of books all ready to go from the thrift store and a whole nother stack of movies that I found just this past weekend. So very excited to get to the next episodes of the thrift hall series or whatever you want to call it. So let me know down in the comments below. Have you seen any of these movies? Are they worth watching? Let me know some recommendations down there. I love when you guys tell me what you love because it helps me decide what to watch next. But also, let me know if there's anything cool that you found recently at the thrift store. I love hearing about those finds, so definitely put those down below. As always, if you guys did enjoy this video, please give it a like down below and consider subscribing to Cinefessions here on YouTube as I make my march toward that 1,000 number. Uh, like I say, I don't just talk movies. I talk all things media, be it movies, books, video games, collectibles, manga, graphic novels. If it's media related, I'm interested in it. And if you are too, you might consider subscribing. All right, guys, so that is going to do it for today. I just want to say thank you all so much for watching, and I want to encourage you to consume some media today. I'll catch you next time. <laughs> <laughs>